Hello everybody, my name is Ambjörn Eggels, I'm the Managing Director of ICE Rancher and ICE Seminars. Uh, our topic today is uh, about batteries, uh, chemical energy storage, and I'm very glad that we have uh, one of our partners, uh, the renowned and uh, famous, I may say famous, uh, battery expert Schmuel de Leon. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you here, Schmuel. Thank you. It's always very difficult uh, to catch you, so uh, we were more than lucky that you had another two hours at the airport, so we are nearby. <laughs> Uh, this interview is about uh, the global battery market and uh, we also focus on Germany and I think we just jump into, into the interview. So Schmuel, um, we are already in quarter one of 2015, so what are the latest developments in the global battery market? Well, I would say that uh, we can see some progress in several directions. Uh, some new technologies that uh, seems to us with the potential for breakthrough. Uh, I'm talking about solid electrolyte, for instance, one of them. Uh, most of the market was thinking that this is a, a dead end uh, three, four years ago, but uh, there is a renaissance with that technology, uh, led by Toyota, Samsung, Apple, and some other uh, players. And uh, the big advantage is uh, solid electrolyte, mean not an organic liquid, no risk for leaks, and no risk for fires, when energy density is better, so this is one direction. Uh, second direction is silicon. Uh, silicon store ten times more energy than graphite as an anode. And uh, mixing it together with graphite and coming to the market with the first uh, solutions can uh, increase the energy density, something that all of us are looking for. Uh, this year we start to see the first uh, cells on mass production, including some a sort of silicon inside uh, and another candidate is lithium sulfur and from that perspective uh, technology that was developed many years a lot of problems not easy to handle but we can see first a company as uh, Oxys Energy from the UK uh, coming uh, with cells uh, to the market uh, first generation 200 watt per kilogram it's not uh, what we expect but uh, we hope that within several years they will come with the better cells uh, with uh, energy density that will defeat uh, the current solution. Well, you already named a lot of things that are taking place. Um, besides these technology trends you're mentioning, do you see any other kind of unexpected thing or, or new thing coming that is kind of changing the industry? Um, for example, here in Germany we often discuss about uh, the fall in the oil price and how it might affect uh, renewables and then of course energy storage as a, as a part of that, for example. Well, I would say that uh, the need for batteries it always exists. It's a bread, it's not a cake, and uh, we need it, and the amount of application we are using is uh, something that grows, and uh, I don't see a change from that perspective. The production numbers worldwide will grow, uh, but we still have some problems with technologies, some problems with cost, the uh, world is not balanced, production in Far East, uh, R&D all over the world, but mainly the Western countries, and uh, um, I, I hope that we, the R&D will bring the food we are looking for in the coming uh, five years. Okay, but this means uh, we, we, we still see a kind of overproduction, as we probably saw the last year, especially for be driven by EV in the beginning and the, then kind of the disappointment that set in? I would say that you can see several trends. Uh, first one, laptops and consumer electronics uh, goes into pouch cell prismatic and uh, cylindrical cell lose their place there. Uh, secondly, um, we see that the immobility is suffering as, as a result of the low oil cost and expected cells for the coming years are uh, grow but not the rate we are expecting to. And uh, grid storage, uh, also the childhood time period, there is some production, uh, it's grow, but not to the number that we were expecting. So in general, yes, that could lead to some uh, extra production. And uh, uh, I would say that sales are uh, keeping the same value of going down. <laughs> so that's the situation. Uh, you already named so many new technologies, so uh, my third question would have been about that. But what is the number one, so the number one newcomer or the number one startup technology of all the many you, you named? So where should, should be the focus? 
I think that the number one is uh, cells, lithium rechargeable cells with uh, silicon nanostructure on it. Okay. Um, I was just last week in a conference in Asch Aschaffenburg in Germany and we saw the roadmap of Panasonic and LG. And uh, both come first with some solution with silicon under mass production. Okay, thank you. Now we are focusing on Germany. What are your general comments on the German market? Of course, the most important in Europe, I think. Well, Germany is the best market for batteries in Europe, definitely. But unfortunately, in the last year, last two years, uh, we're facing some problems with production. Uh, yeah, first of all, several a... battery uh, or cell makers close business. Yeah. I'm talking about uh, weaponing in Hamburg. I'm talking about uh, Litec, uh, that's close the cell production. Uh, we have difficulties with Laclanche. Daimler uh, sold something? Uh, Daimler actually, uh, uh, they decided to buy cells from Far East and not to make them in Germany, to build batteries here. And they uh, extending uh, Deutsche Accumulative uh, to, to fill the gap. But uh, cell production in Germany is something that is disappearing. Yeah. No, I mean, you're pointing uh, directly into, into a, a problem that we have been discussing in the last month uh, with, um, with many people. So I'm just uh, p picking up this line. Uh, uh, to, to some degree, the, the, there was this enthusiasm in Germany about battery production and a uh, lot of investment in R&D. And, and now there is this, I would simply call it disappointment in inverted commas. And um, I think it doesn't make sense for this interview to talk about price development of batteries and that it has to have a certain price tag uh, for, for electric vehicles. But maybe we should just go through the, the, the value chain of, or the global value chain of batteries and uh, the, where German technology might fit in here. So I'm just naming uh, shortly uh, uh, the word and, and just comment on it. So the first part of this uh, value chain, research. What would you be your comment on German research with respect to the global value chain? Do we do the research here and then uh, we just have to sell it or what would be the point? Well, I would say that there is uh, a lot of R&D on batteries in Germany. Germany is a leading country in R&D. You have excellent universities, institutes like Fraunhofer, and a lot of R&D done here also in companies. And from that perspective, uh, I think it's okay. Uh, material production. Uh, we can see some German material production in the world uh, uh, supply chain. Uh, the problem comes when it comes to sales. Now, the issue is that uh, the government should understand that uh, uh, lithium batteries uh, or batteries in general is the energy of the future. And as such, uh, uh, production should be a key point for each country and uh, should be developed the right model for Germany uh, to continue to make and uh, produce uh, Celsius uh, and not to import them just from overseas. Okay, and let me just, uh, I, I will pick up on that, so let me just come back to, to the research question. Uh, I mean, there was recently a study by Theo Munich basically showing that although Germany picked up research, still um, it's lagging far behind, especially in lithium-ion, uh, compared to, to Asia. So one question would be and say, okay, let's leave this part of the research aside. Um, the car makers, if they want to have this knowledge, they should simply buy it. And we should focus maybe on some other technology where there could be some more or something more for the value chain. How would you see that? Well, uh, the R&D is a key point here. Okay. And if you want to keep Germany leading, uh, R&D should be kept here. The problem but is in all technologies, all the, the, all the leading technologies okay. and uh, technology for the future. Excellent. Regarding the key point is production. There is a need to think what should be done that production in Germany is going to be cost effective and cell manufacturing uh, will be in such uh, uh, performance and cost that will be attractive in the world, world competition. Uh, it can be done and, uh, uh, with the right plan. Okay. Um, besides production, where we'll pick up immediately, is there anything else? I mean, we have chemistry on the list, software, so battery management systems, production tools, so how to set up the factory or testing. 
um, is this less important or is it is this all okay and then it's only production and then we talk about well, of course when we are dealing with rechargeable batteries we are dealing with a system we are dealing with the charger, we are dealing with the battery, the battery includes electronics, the battery management system, <laughs> and uh, packaging, and many other features inside. Uh, when we are dealing with industry, industry should provide solution to everything, and uh, uh, we expect production and all kinds of uh, equipment, uh, boards, and the parts needed for uh, establishing good battery industry here in Germany. Okay, so I mean, since you already answered the question that battery production in Germany is the key strategic point, um, what should we do? I mean, where do you see the, 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 the tipping point that we can have it here? Well, I would say that... Uh, because production cost is wide. I mean. Yes, material cost is the same worldwide, not uh, including materials made in China, which is a little bit uh, uh, um, cost less, but uh, from the other hand, uh, quality is not the same. But uh, materials, <coughs> same cost everywhere. Uh, the key point here is automation. Because if you have the right automation, you can reduce cost dramatically. And this is one thing. Secondly is government support. Okay. And uh, for establishing a business, batteries are the basic for many technologies. So having a, an in-house battery industry, it's something that can support in the overall. So it makes sense to subsidize, support companies, and uh, have have the solution in house. Well, and maybe uh, we should uh, join together and make a study for of uh, battery production in Germany and uh, where, how to get it here. Well, I would say that uh, at least uh, having one day with all the battery uh, experts in Germany together uh, uh, and also adding uh, decision makers, politicians and discussing together uh, that topic and what should be done uh, could be a good idea. So that's something we are going to work on. <laughs> um, you already said it, and subsidies, this is a, a word I would like to pick up uh, soon. But what is your advice to German car manufacturers and suppliers? I mean, let us recall a little bit the discussion about Tesla, the Gigafactory. So this was like, wow, big news, and then, oh, we have to move, and then since then, it just went down and nobody is uh, talking about that. So, uh, how do you see that? And what's your advice to BMW, Audi, VW, I mean, Porsche? I would say that's first of all thinking out of the box. Okay. Thinking out of the box, it's mean uh, checking also opportunities of cylindrical cells for EV batteries, like 18650 cells. And uh, uh, all opportunities and not just concentrating on prismatic cells and uh, uh, having one source. Um, if you want to encourage competition and production, we should have at least several options and not one option in our hands. Definitely, definitely. Uh, so that's something I would, I would like to see. Um, uh, beside that, of course, the battery cost is the most expensive part in an uh, electric vehicle. And uh, as an overall, we will have to increase performance, reduce cost, uh, more efficiency and this is a challenge it's not easy uh, but this is the key to establishing the mobility so out of the box thinking for the car industry difficult difficult topic let's leave e mobility for a moment because we talk so many times about that and let's change to grid storage so the big story now we see the sales we saw the move of uh, trade fairs from energy storage to the solar uh, to solar trade fairs, and I would like to pick up the word of, of, of subsidies here, because the question in the end is, I mean, we we see sold systems, we, we see many systems from China, but the question here is, how should Germany think about this problem, in order not to end up exactly with the solar solar panels? So Germany is the installment base, and China is the production base. Um, well, so I see the connection of the two questions and then what government subsidies can really do. Well, first, uh, grid storage, it's a newcomer. And I would say that the progress in that industry is much slower than what we expected before. Um, it's needed definitely. Uh, this, instead of uh, making new uh, power factories, a better thing is to use uh, better the current production and uh, uh, to be much more efficient. 
the issue here is that uh, you are right. I mean, there were subsidies in Germany for the solar panels, and whenever it was like that, uh, the industry grows, and that's also supported storage for the grid because it's needed for the solar industry. But when the subsidies reduced, then it became a crisis. Uh, regarding production, it's, it's a matter of fact. I mean, production in Far East is much cheaper. It's the same problem like with sales. So uh, if you want to have production, you need automation, and uh, um, you need to keep the quality gap, and, uh, and to compete. I mean, there is no other way to compete. Compete with more intelligent solutions. Yeah. Which exactly brings me to the, to the nearly last question. Um, I mean, b batteries and chemistry is considered hard science. Uh, and at the same time, we see digitalization making everything faster, everything quicker. You can accelerate. Um, do you see an impact of this kind of digitalization into this, this hard science, hard stuff sector field of battery, battery production? And could it improve or impact business models? Well, I wouldn't say so. Uh, of course, testing equipment and the ability to test more and to speed up R&D They could bring some foods, but you are right. The development on the electrochemistry is a slow development. Yeah, It's not something yeah. that's running fast. And uh, um, I don't think there is a direct relation between uh, uh, electronic progress and, uh, and uh, electrochemistry uh, progress. Uh, it can affect, but this is not the main issue. But it would be worth to think about it at least, being intelligent also in this area. If you have good computing uh, uh, power, you can analyze maybe a little bit better, but still you need to do the basic chemistry. Okay, but computing power, a new application of big data models and things like that, this could be... That's good help. Okay. Excellent. You're going to have a seminar in July. We are happy to have you back in Germany with that. So what can people expect after all these long explanations? Did you already tell everything? Yes, well, actually our seminar is covering uh, topics from the basic, definition, primary system, rechargeable systems, uh, uh, chargers, military, safety, uh, fuel cells, super cup, uh, battery design, and uh, also, of course, the immobility, EV batteries, and everything. Uh, what I can say is that uh, this year the seminar is going to be uh, updated with uh, the most updated information worldwide. Uh, it's a very, very efficient training and uh, also brainstorming to attendance together and uh, the plan is to bring it to a very high level, technical level, uh, to discuss the situation, the market and uh, to support the current local efforts uh, of the uh, battery and electrochemistry and EV industry. Okay. Shmuel, thank you very much. It was a pleasure talking to you and having this interview uh, and the insights you gave us. Much appreciated. So thanks and have a safe flight back. Thank you very much. And I always like to be in Germany and, uh, and enjoy the time. It's good to have you here.